Okay, the last thing that I want to show you about random number generation is what the seed does. So now that we know how to make a random number generator without a seed value, which was to just run this constructor with nothing in the brackets, now let's see what happens if we use this thing called a seed inside the brackets. Now I've just made a variable here that's, I just pick some random number here that's a long type. So it can be an integer number, but it can be pretty big. And I just feed that into the random number generators constructor here. So there's two different constructors, one with a seed, one without. So if I use the seed, and then all I'm doing here is picking, kind of like rolling the die and picking a number between one and six and printing it out over and over and over again, four times. So when I run it, okay, here we go. So it picks six and then five and then six and then three. If I run it again, it picks six, five, six, three again. That doesn't seem random. And again, just to see. Yeah, it's no coincidence. Same random number set every single time. So what's happening here is that because of the seed, it's got a preset sequence of numbers it's going to generate, and it sticks to that. So why would you ever want to do this? Well, one good reason is, as you know, with TSSOJ, it has an online judge, and what the online judge wants is something predictable, but seemingly random, and it can judge whether you got the correct answer, even when you're picking random numbers, like in a random math problem generator. As long as it knows what the seed is, it will know what numbers will be generated and in what particular order. So it can mark your solution right or wrong. So I would say most of the time you don't want to specify a seed, but it does require it when running your solutions in TSSOJ so that it can mark you right or wrong.